Hello everyone, let's talk about uh, project quality management in this lecture. In this lecture, I want to give everyone an overview of quality management first. Then I will talk about uh, how to develop quality management criteria. Lastly, I want to talk about uh, how to ensure our project reaches the criteria. More specifically, I want to focus on a new approach called uh, Six Sigma. What is a quality management? It is a process of determining quality policies, objectives, and responsibilities so that uh, the final products or services from our project can reach the stakeholders' expectations. In a quality management, there are two important activities. First, we need to develop the quality control measurement. Second, we need to take actions to ensure our project reaches the quality criteria. Let's talk about these two activities one by one. When you develop a quality measurement criteria, you need to look at uh, three important documents. The first one is the scope baseline. We received the work breakdown structure from the scope management activities. The work breakdown structure chart can show what activities are involved in a project. Those activities are the factors we need to consider when we develop the quality control measurement criteria. For which activities we need to develop the quality policies, objectives, and the control measurement? This is the question we need to answer first. The next two important documents you need to consider are the project schedule and the cost baseline. You want to figure out when each activity should be completed, how much money can be invested in each activity. The time factor and the cost factor are very important. You could raise a very high requirement on quality, but if you cannot complete your project on time, on budget, your high requirement would be just an unrealistic objective. So when you develop the quality measurement criteria, you need to consider the project schedule factor and the cost baseline factor. When we implement our project, we need to take actions to ensure our project reaches the quality criteria. Several quality assurance methods are available. One of the most popular methods is called the Six Sigma approach. For its popularity and usefulness, I want to introduce Six Sigma to everyone in this lecture. Six Sigma was designed by Bill Smith at Motorola in 1986. At the beginning, this approach was designed for improving the management process quality at Motorola. Then it was broadly used in service industry, production industry, and so on. It is a very good uh, statistic application in quality control. Let's take a look at uh, how this approach works. Let's say our project is to manufacture some uh, chocolate bars. We set up a criteria. Each chocolate bar should weigh 100 grams. This is our quality criteria, right? We want to see if our product follows this criteria. What should we do? We will get a bunch of chocolate bars from our assembly line. If this sample, if this testing sample follows this quality criteria, then we will assume that uh, all chocolate bars on our assembly line follow the quality criteria. According to Six Sigma, the weights of the chocolate bars in the testing group follow a normal distribution. In this normal distribution, the mean value mu should be your quality criteria. We just said our criteria is each chocolate bar weighs 100 grams, so mu equals to 100 in our case. We expect each chocolate bar to weigh 100 grams, but in practice, it's very difficult to make each chocolate bar weigh 100 grams exactly, right? Some chocolate bars could weigh only maybe 99 grams. Others could be a little bit heavier, 101, 102, 103 grams, and so on. We call the difference between the actual weight of a chocolate bar and our quality criteria 
a standard deviation. Let's say we have a rule. We specify that 1 gram equals to 1 unit standard deviation. If we allow the weight of a chocolate bar to have a 1 unit standard deviation, then in our testing group, over 68.26% chocolate bars should weigh between 99 grams and 101 grams. If the percentage is lower than 68.26, then from a statistical perspective, our product quality falls below the criteria. If we allow the weights of a chocolate bar to have a 2-unit standard deviation, then over 95.46% of chocolate bars in our testing group should weigh between 98 grams and 102 grams. If the percentage falls below 95.46, from the statistical perspective, our product quality falls below the criteria. We can extend the unit of standard deviation to up to 6 units. If we allow the weight of a chocolate bar to have a 6 unit standard deviation, then over 99.99% chocolate bars in our testing group should weigh between 94 grams and 106 grams. If the percentage is lower than 99.99, then from a statistical perspective, our product quality falls below the criteria. We have to pay attention to the assembly line. Because something is going on there, we couldn't reach the quality criteria. Here you need to pay attention to two points. First, you don't have to allow up to 6 unit standard deviations. Because the more unit standard deviations you allow, the more uncertainties you will bring into your product quality. More unit standard deviation means more dramatic change from your criteria. That's not good. Second, some classmates may have a question. You just said uh, 1 gram equals to 1 unit standard deviation. Can I use 0.5 grams as a 1 unit standard deviation? Yes, you can. You specify the value for 1 unit standard deviation. But uh, a common practice is we draw several samples and then calculate the standard deviation of each sample. Then we will calculate the average of the standard deviations from multiple samples. The average value would be the value for your standard deviation you want to use. This is how you use Six Sigma to control quality.